I thought we were the protectors of truth. Democrats, Republicans, you all lie. We, a small band of survivors, are on our way to the Steel City to find the resistance. Join us. Welcome to the Steel City Resistance with Senior Airman Ward Miller and the ironclad voice of Pittsburgh Hutch Jr. laying down verbal C4 to blow away the lies and the political tomfoolery. Your papers have been cleared. Welcome to the Steel City Resistance. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Steel City Resistance. This is episode number 68. My name is Hutz Jr. I'm located in Brookline, a neighborhood in the city of Pittsburgh, and I am deep down inside the bunker. And I'm Ward Miller, also in the city of Pittsburgh, here in Mission Control. Uh, looking forward to a great show. Uh, hopefully, we, we can provide something for you. Yeah, that's what we like to try to do, and it's been another... Uh, a week that's just been revealing and, and in so many different ways. And, and as we've said earlier on the program, the, the masks are starting to come off and uh, everything gets a little funny around this time of the year, especially when a Democrat is uh, pretty much losing. Uh, you get to see all kinds of incredible things going on. And there was uh, just no, no lack of that this week from uh, one end of the spectrum to the other. Now, the Secret Service is still uh, still embroiled in a, in a situation. I don't know how that's going to pan out. I mean, you hear different, uh, different angles and, and different uh, speculation and things like that, and it's just uh, it's not really going away, Ward. I mean, they're trying to – the administration is trying to put a good face on it, but at the same time, I mean, how can you? Well, if you saw anything from the uh, – what's it called, the uh... – the me it was the media thing that they did last night. And, the White uh, House Correspondents' Dinner, yeah. Yeah. They even brought it up there. I mean, the, the, yeah, and they were making fun of it. Yeah. You know, uh, what's his name? Kimmel came on and he was talking about the Secret Service thing. He was, in fact, that there was, a, I can't remember if it was him or Obama made a joke about, hey, if you need a gun, talk to Eric Holder. Yeah, that was Kimmel. You know, they, they were basically mocking the Fast and Furious. It's unreal. You know, the the class level of this group of people is so low. That it's just it's unbelievable. They did they they did that with Fast and Furious. Now there's two families out there that are grieving because of this. And, and you know I get sick and tired of Fox News talking about the botched gun running operation. It wasn't a, it was all about the Second Amendment. It wasn't about catching anybody. You caught that on the first time we talked about it. Yeah. Well, the, you know the thing is th there's a difference between me saying something and the media saying something. You know I can say stuff without having to back it up. I mean, I'm not saying that that's for sure what it was. I mean, all all signs point to that. But, you know, I, I'm not going to get sued if I say something like that. Whereas The media won't either. I mean, the media is well, no, farcical. Fox News would. I mean, you, you consider, yeah. you know, I, I mean, in the initial days of the Obama administration, they wouldn't let Fox News have a seat in, in the correspondence pool because they said that they weren't a real news entity. And, you know, for one of the few times, and... In fairness, uh, some of the media uh, seems to be having uh, some conscience issues because you're starting to see other media organizations starting to say, you know what, we only have 13 listeners left. We better start telling the truth, and they're starting to buck up a little. But in their defense, the rest of the members of the other networks that are in the uh, presidential pool all banded together and said if Fox News doesn't come in, we're not coming in either, if you remember. Yeah. That, that, oh, was, yeah, that was valiant. Uh, well, here's the thing, and here's where you can tell how telling it is that the that the media is basically starting to run away from this uh, this candidate. Is if you notice on the predominantly uh, left leaning CNN, they're starting to do stories about Fast and Furious. Finally, um, they're starting to talk about you know the Secret Service stuff. They're starting to talk about you know th they really can't get away from it now. Right. You know, and when you have CNN doing it and CBS and NBC, you know, they're not going to come out and they're not going to make a, uh, what's the word, like, like a, a, a killer expose. Right. But if everybody else is reporting it, they got to report it too. Because if they don't, then they look like they're a shill. I mean, I everybody think, knows they're a shill, but. I think they don't CBS have a, had a, something a to do with breaking it. CBS was uh, one of the, I, don't, I think it was a story. Fast and Furious that the CBS, the female correspondent, like got contacted by the White House press office and, and they like cursed at her and everything else. 
Yeah, she had, well, she had to leave CBS because of it. And really? And did she leave? A, yeah, and then she wrote a book. Nice. <laughs> well, well, we'll just have to stand by and watch that. I'm going to revisit the correspondence dinner in a minute. Uh, but uh, Eric sent us a couple tweets. He sent one tweet about how horrible the, the uh, audio quality was. And, ladies and gentlemen, I apologize for that. Uh, it was. It should have It should have rang a bell when I noticed that the file was only 18 megabytes. And I should have realized that something magic didn't happen and make the file smaller, uh, that the, all, the, the quality was just bad, the bit rate was too low. And I'm, I apologize. And it hopefully won't happen again. Now, he also tweeted a... Uh, I think I got it a week late. It was about uh, Al Sharpton's Action Network and Attorney General of the United States Eric Holder addressing that very uh, upstanding organization and had very good words to say about the right Reverend Al Sharpton, and I just thought that was heartwarming. Well, actually, we covered that story last week, but we didn't have any audio for it. We just talked about it uh, where... Uh, yeah, you're right. Eric Holder basically bowed down and, and was kissing the feet of Al Sharpton, who is nothing more than a, a race baiter and a, a, you know, he he wants, he needs there to be racism in this country. If if there was not racism in this country, he would have absolutely nothing to do. Yeah, he'd be unemployed, no question. Uh, so he has to, whether it's real, fake, drummed up, whatever, you know, and, and not even getting into the whole Trayvon Martin case. You look into his history and see all the all the things that he stepped into to the, that he was going to champion. It, every bit of it was he has to advance the idea that this is a racist country. Sure. In, in order for him to to stay relevant. Here's the thing I don't understand is I don't he if you're going to get behind a racist if that's your if that's your motivation or one of these race baiters, race hustlers, whatever you want to call them, at least get somebody that's serious. You know, get somebody like, uh, not Malcolm X, Louis Farrakhan. You know, somebody, they're all whacked out. But Al Sharpton is stupid. Al Sharpton, when he speaks, is bona fide stupid. Well, I mean, here's the other thing, too. You, you look at, you know, you, let's bring up Farrakhan. After the, uh, the, the first Gulf War, uh, he broke his neck to get over and, and kiss Libya. on Saddam Hussein. And Libya, you yeah. Know, even though he wasn't, you know, the, the, the State Department didn't want uh, civilians there. He And right before it, um, Sean Penn ran over there to, to say, you know, what a great guy Saddam was. And, you know... It, that's that's an act of treason. They they he, he should not he, he should have been expatriated as the moment he set foot on Iraqi soil, you know, it, to to badmouth this country. He should have lost his citizenship immediately. Yeah, and, I agree. And not been allowed to come back. I mean, the okay, treason. If Saddam's such a great guy, you live with the him. The treasonous acts that these people on the left commit is unbelievable. I mean, the whole story to me of Louis Farrakhan. Uh, and I've said this numerous times, and it baffles my mind. It, it really blows me away. The whole idea that this this person has a following of black people to a, a, an organization, uh, a political system that has been dogging black people ever since their inception is beyond me. I mean, they're the biggest slave traders that there ever was of, yeah. of black Africans. Specifically, they still get dogged in Pakistan and other other Arab countries uh, where they're working as servants and, and basically slaves. So that just always that always blew me away. But to have Al Sharpton, a person as clownish as him, uh, who can't even put a, a sentence together, is beyond me. It just shows how ridiculous the whole the whole. The, the whole thing is. is too, Hutch. The the whole Democratic Party has lied to the black community. Oh, certainly. And 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 the black community feels well. You know, they they're the ones who want to give us free stuff and give us handouts. They want to give you free stuff and handouts so they can control you. That is the first the first. That's right. They're they enslaving control. you. They're absolutely enslaving you. I don't know what the current rate is, but for eight hundred dollars a month to sell your soul to some people that hate you is ridiculous. I mean, exactly. That's just unbelievable, and it's sad that it happens. Uh, I've been noticing uh, lately also that the Occupy vitriol is, is ratcheting up a little bit. We're starting to hear uh, more acts of violence and, and more uh, plans for acts of violence. They have a black cell, I think it's called now, or black block, that's uh, the actual anarchists that have been at every anarchist meeting and rally around the country. It's the same folks. 
You know, the people that came to the G20, it's the same people. Uh, but May Day's coming up, Communist, communism's main uh, holiday. So everybody that you see out demonstrating on May 1st, on Tuesday, uh, is out there either at the request or they are communists. So that's just something to, to pay attention to. And it'll be interesting to see how the media portrays it. I think I'm going to make a conscious effort, uh, even though it's hard. I think I'm going to try to turn on NBC, uh, which is the worst network at this time. They they hire and pay uh, Al Sharpton for doing the criminal things that he's doing. Uh, and they have uh, Chris Matthews on their staff and Sergeant Schultz and everything else. So uh, it's going to be fun to watch that. I don't. I wonder if anything's going to happen here. Have you been downtown lately? Nah, I, I basically downtown Pittsburgh. Um, you know, the the there's no businesses there. There's nothing to draw no, me down uh, there. Me either. Uh, you know, so I usually, you know, if I have to do any kind of shopping or anything, I don't go anywhere near downtown Pittsburgh. You can't park anywhere. No, it's you know, horrible. Man. And and then they keep raising the the rates to park. You know, and then, and then they can't understand why people why downtown doesn't get any business because number one and it's basically the same as the federal government you know you, you run all the businesses out because you, you charge them such crazy uh, tax rates that they can't stay in business and the ones that can't stay in business you you make parking so expensive that nobody can afford to yeah, park there yeah, to, go, to go patronize and there's no police anymore i mean there used to be police infantry you know uh beat cops but, yeah, that, that would walk up and down and you would know their names. And this is actually a good teaching moment because you and I were close to the same age. And I'm sure as with my family, my mom took me downtown around Christmas time. Oh, and yeah. You, you got dressed up, you know, and you got on the streetcar or whatever or taxi. We didn't have a car taxi or, you know, somebody gave us a ride. And we went downtown to Gimbel's, Kaufman's, ate at Woolworth's in a little cafeteria. It was awesome. Yeah, they and, and all the all the windows were you know were yeah. decorated with uh, the Christmas themes. It was, and it was beautiful. Yeah, and I mean it, those days are gone because the the uh, current administration in, in, in the city of Pittsburgh has basically run them out. Of, you know, I mean they, they they try and have like first night and all these these special events to to draw people into the city of Pittsburgh, but there's. You know, if it wasn't for a first night, you have absolutely no reason to go there. Yeah, there's nothing down there. I mean, it's it's like it's like Oakland. You can't smoke a cigarette walking down the street without people damn near attacking you. Yeah. You know, it's 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 really sad, man. I mean, downtown used to be fun, uh, but anyway, what are you going to do? Now, I've been noticing on our on our Facebook page and, and things like that. This guy Andy's been uh, pretty much commenting on everything that we write, and uh, I don't know about him. You know, he he made it to alternate delegate he was elected to, to the tampa convention which means nothing unless one of the other ones isn't there is what i'm told by josh joshua wonder uh unfortunately did not have enough votes he was getting there but uh, melissa halujak did she got in there so there was one that's not a, a hardcore uh romney person yeah well the thing is to the the thing that scares me is you, you're going to get somebody in there that is going to, you know, just go off the rails and say, you know, uh, we're going to split the vote between oh, yeah. uh, Romney and Ron Paul and, you know, and, and we're going to give, you know, X number of delegates to Ron Paul, which, which would be the, the, the scariest thing ever. I mean, well, I'm reading I'm reading reports and I, I have to research this a little bit better. Uh, but the text of the reports, and I've read more than one of them, has Paul winning states, has him winning delegate counts in states. Is that real? Well, what they're thinking is that the delegates that would have been uh, for Santorum are going to switch and just go to Ron Paul because Ron Paul is the next. Uh, they, they feel as though he's as conservative as Santorum was. Ron Paul. Yeah, I mean, and he is, uh, and, and, and you know, I make fun of them and whatnot. I, I, I've said it a million times on the show, and, and and I'll say it again. I don't have a problem with his, uh, his uh, national policy for the you know the dom domestic policy. Some of it, but some of it, if you if you listen to but the his extremes. foreign policy, scares the shit out of me because it's like you, we're going to ignore Iran. 
You know, he's like, well, you know, we don't have to worry about them getting a nuclear weapon. That's none of our business. Yeah, it is our business. Because as soon as they can get a nuclear weapon, the first thing they're going to do is point it at Israel and, and, and cause a, a war of, that's catastrophic. Some, some of his domestic policies are, are completely, uh, I mean, radical to say the least. I mean, he, he would get rid of almost... <laughs> I mean, I think there's a need for limited government. I don't think that libertarianism will work, especially in the United States of America with our morality as low as it's sunk to as a people. I mean, yeah. the shit you see in the streets, uh, to take off all the rules uh, is just, uh, I think it would be mayhem. But, but that's, that's debatable. What I don't think is debatable is I don't think Ron Paul would stand a chance against a Democrat machine. They would use his own words, his own lunacy, and I know he's not loony, but some of the things he says, whether or not they're constitutional is almost irrelevant because uh, what counts is the presentation, how it's perceived. Our constitutional scholar president who taught constitutional law at the collegiate level doesn't understand that the Supreme Court can overturn laws. So if that's the case, you know, it goes back to what we said before. They don't teach him the Constitution. They teach them... Precedent. You know, precedent. Yeah. And that that's the whole thing is it, can we get precedent? But Paul, I, I don't think Paul, I can't imagine his campaign. Can you imagine him debating Obama? Obama will say things that have nothing to do with anything, but they'll make Paul look like a moron. Oh yeah, and the and the electorate, the the well, level. the same thing with Romney. It doesn't really matter who who Obama's candidate. But Romney is, is Ob more normal looking than Paul. <laughs> you know, well, I mean, I'm not trying to be funny, but Paul looks like a Vulcan. You know, well, he, the thing is, I mean, Obama could come out and and just say, you know, fish patties, tennis shoes, exactly, you know, bubble gum, and everybody goes, oh, that was the that was one of the most co cohesive endorsements we've ever heard. <laughs> but the press you will know, come out. The press will come out and say. Ron Paul, or, or Obama will say, Ron Paul wants your kids to have access to heroin. That's what he'll say. And he'll be right, almost. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and you can't, the media will take that, and that'll be the mantra. It That's won't matter what Paul, it won't matter what Paul says. I think, I think Romney can fight back. Romney is more, uh, for lack of a better term, normal, as far as more mainstream. I, and you know as well as I do that Romney's not my first pick. But now Romney is my first pick. I mean, it's it's the only shot we got. That's right, you and know, I, and that's it, what it, guys it, like this this uh, Andy guy bother me because they're out there. They're still trashing Romney. They still have a poster out there that that's a, a blend between Romney's and Obama's face, and they're they're telling each other that Romney's the exact same as Obama. And although we were arguing during the primary fight because we wanted a certain flavor, Romney's nothing like a communist. No, uh, you know, I mean, it goes back to he's he's his thinking is more moderate than conservative. Um, he's establishment. He's, I mean, you know, he, he's he's yeah, it's establishment, you know, right in the middle of the road. He, he's not too far to the left. He's not too far to the right. Uh, you know, he, he's milk toast. He's I, right. In the middle. I think he can be drugged to the right, though, and I think that's what will happen. Uh, I'd kind of hope that that he could be led a little bit. Not, you know, I'm not saying he has to go hard right. Uh, I I think that some of some of the uh, some of his opinion, you know, some of his uh, positions can shift a little bit. Doesn't have to be a you know a seismic shift. Just a little, you know, a little bit to the right. See, I think I think a, a four years of, of of George Bush, and we're sunk. I mean, if somebody doesn't come in there with some radical ideas of George and, Bush. Yeah, George Bush added up half of that debt that we have. Oh, okay. You know, with the no child left behind and the prescription drug bill and every, I mean, not half, but he put a lot, he put some money in there. Well, yeah, I mean. And the wars, it, it, and I mean, I just think that, you know, and I'm not anti-war, but I am anti-$15 trillion in debt, and we got to do something about that, and it's just going to keep getting bigger. I mean, this next president, in order to keep this country sound, is going to half to deal with the entitlement programs. With, yeah. Within four years, he's going to have to do it. Or we're going to, I don't know what's going to happen if they don't. Well, I mean, th there was a story this week about the, uh, the balloon payment for student loans. And they have till July to figure out what they're going to do. 
to keep the student loan rate or you know the interest rate at the same percentage if they can't do that the student rate student loan rate is going to basically double well, come July I mean, so oh. anybody who has a student loan is it should be sweating right now because it's like okay I've been paying you know five or six percent whatever it is and it's going to jump to thirteen percent. I think I think passed it. The house passed it today. I think or yesterday. Well, the house had its own bill, yeah. and there the house bill wanted to cut some uh, preventative programs, and the Republicans or the Democrats in the Senate wanted to go after. Uh, some kind of uh, entitled or not entitlements, some kind of um, basically uh, subsidies that we pay to the oil companies, to the big oil companies. Yeah, we'll Here's see. the thing, and, and, and you know, it, the people that, that are doing this don't understand economics, right? Where they say, oh, no, you can't, we, got, we can't cut that program. That program's necessary. Take the money out of, out of, out of the, uh, off of the, uh, Oil companies, yeah, they're they're rich. They deserve it. Let me tell you something, folks. They're gonna they're going to pass that money on, so they're not going to lose money. They're not in business to lose money. So if the government doesn't give them their subsidy, that subsidy becomes part of the gas price. Yeah, and and so, one, one thing to young people, to young people out there, under no circumstances should you think that it's okay for your loan to be forgiven. You borrowed money, and now you got to deal with it. Because I've heard a lot of that too, and the president is trying to target that. Oh yeah, and he's trying to get that right, entitlement so. mentality right out of the gate. You know, so don't even consider that as a as an option. It has it has to be fixed another way. When you borrow money, you got to pay it back. I don't care if it is for college. That's why a lot of people don't go to college. Or they go they, they go to the military exactly. and let the military pay for it because that's one of your benefits. And that's what my son's doing. You know? and, and God bless him. And that's, you know, if I you don't able, have the money to pay for it up front and you don't want to go into debt for, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars, the, the only way to do it is go to the military, do your time, get out with an honorable discharge, and then go back into, go back into the, uh, go to college after the fact or start off going to college with ROTC, you know, being enlisted. Sure. You know. I mean, However one of the, you plan to do it. One of the benefits that, that I received from uh, being an Iraq war veteran is I was able to take the benefits that I could have used for myself for my own college education, and they changed it to allow me to apply that to my children. So my son paid for one year himself. He borrowed one year uh, because I blew my wad on him in high school. I don't know if you sent any of your kids a Catholic high school word, but it's uh, it's expensive. It's, it's not cheap, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, that's what I did. And I told him, I'll give you a shot, and then college you're on your own. You know, man up. And uh, he did. And then I got that benefit his, sec his middle two years, and then he joined Army ROTC at an adjacent college at John Carroll University. So that's, uh, he'll be, next year he'll be an Army officer. Uh, so anyway, that's just a little sugar-coated story. The White House bar, Correspondents' bar, Dinner. Bar, yeah, the White House Correspondents' uh, Dinner. Uh, Obama had, I, I was going to put him on here, the audio of him. He, he ran a bunch of jokes, you know, some stand-up. And it was just so horrible, I didn't do it, man. It wasn't, it wasn't funny. It, it, it wasn't funny. You know, the and one the thing Jimmy Kimmel stuff wasn't funny. It, 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 and that goes back to what I was saying earlier, is the Jimmy Kimmel stuff was, was dead nuts on. You know, basically, Kimmel said, we can't afford another four years of Obama. Yeah, he, he was, he was sitting right there. Yeah, he and was he's stressing. giggling about it. And, the, and the, th the only thing that Obama said that was even newsworthy uh, was that he said, what's the difference between a, what they call Sarah Palin? Or no, what's the difference between Sarah Palin and a pit bull? And he said, pit bull was very delicious. I'm thinking you are just off the hook, disgusting, dude. Well, I mean, what? Because he made that he had made that joke that when he was living in Indonesia, he he, uh, he had eaten dog. Good for him. <laughs> well, you and I have both been writing a lot more on the blog, so ladies and gentlemen, you can go by there and see our literary uh, <laughs> clowning around, uh, goofing around, and trying to trying to. I, I a couple times I just got. I was thinking on stuff so hard I had to write it down. Yeah, that, that's basically what happens to me. I, it, in fact, the last one I wrote, I was watching the, the uh, I was watching the president talk about something, 
and I just got so fed up with him saying, you know, what's fair? Oh, yeah. You know, th these guys don't pay their fair share. You know, this isn't fair. Well, what's fair? Fair is everybody paying the same thing. So why isn't there a, f a fair tax or, or a consumption tax so that everybody pays instead of just 1%? 1%, oh, no, what, what is it? It's, I, I think it's 1% of the wealthy people. The, the top 1% pay 53% of yeah, all taxes in the United States. Something like that. States. It's huge. It's huge. I'll and tell it's, you. it's ridiculous. When you're going to charge them, you know, 50% of, of the money that they make goes to taxes. And we have people that aren't paying a damn dime of tax to begin with. And, and crying for more. Crying for people to pay yeah. more. Uh, I'll tell you, with the whole fairness thing, my children, I had three rules of life. The three rules of life, and the number one rule of life, life is not fair. That was my number one rule that I taught them. The second rule was nothing in life is free. In one way or another, nothing in life is free. And the third rule is a little bit, never pee in your mess kit. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of military, but yeah. But I mean, that means like if you're going to break into cars, don't break into them right in front of your house. You know what I mean? That was what... <laughs> Uh, hey, we're a hundred or so away from twenty thousand hits on the website, so that's a good news story. Uh, we're, yeah, I mean, we're, we're not we're, we're, we're not the Drudge coming Report. Coming up like a thousand every other week. I know we're not the Drudge Report, but we're easing up there, you know. Yeah. <laughs> hey, something else that uh, before we get to the stories here, now that we're finished with the first five minutes of the program, uh, something that I'm going to try to try to do every week. I don't know if I'm gonna or not, but I'm going to give it a shot. This is called the Weekly Jihad Report. And it covers April 14th to April 20th. There have been worldwide 54 jihad attacks, five Allah Akbar attacks, 169 dead bodies, and 457 critically injured due to the religion of peace, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, wow. Word fast and furious passed a milestone this week they passed a real and i'll tell you before you get into the story i was afraid and i'm still a little timid about uh boehner i don't know boehner i just something about this guy what's his first name john boehner, john boehner. speaker of the house i thought about this early on a couple months ago that he was interfering in this and there's some rift between Issa's office and grassley's office and, and boehner's office and i don't know they're saying that they're going to do this, but I'm going to have to wait and see first. Well, the Republicans are preparing contempt charge, a contempt citation against Eric Holder over Fast and Furious. The interesting thing about this story is it came to us from CBS News, which we were talking about earlier, because these are actually mainstream media is actually starting to pick up the reporting on this. House Republicans investigating Fast and Furious scandal plan to pursue a contempt citation against Attorney General Eric Holder's Senior congressional aides told CBS News the resolution will accuse Holder and his Justice Department of obstructing the congressional probe into the allegations that the government let thousands of weapons fall into the hands of Mexican drug cartels. The citation would also attempt to force Holder to turn over tens of thousands of pages of documents related to the probe, which has entered its second year. For months, congressional Republicans probing the ATF Fast and Furious Gunwalker scandal led by California Republican Daryl Issa uh, have been investigating a contempt, investigating a contempt citation. They, they've worked quietly behind the scenes to build support among fellow Republicans since it would ultimately face a full House vote. CBS News has confirmed that House Speaker John Boehner, an Ohio Republican, was provided a 48-page, 48 48-page uh, 48 long draft by ISA, who heads the House Oversight and Government Reform Committee. While there are very legitimate arguments to be made in favor of such action, no decision has been made to move forward. Uh, with one by the Speaker of the House or House Republican leaders, a Republican leadership aide told uh, CBS News. See, I, I don't see how you, I don't see how you don't, how there is any other infraction that is bigger than this that would warrant contempt of Congress. When you have seventy thousand documents that you're requesting and you only have seven thousand of them, and it's been well over a year, well, it's almost a year. I think we started reporting it in June. If I recall correctly, yeah, it's almost a year. Yeah. So, well, I, according to this, it's two, almost two years. Okay. Well, it, that's even worse then. Uh, so, I, I don't see John Boehner. There's no upside to this, my friend. I, I don't. We're know. watching. I, here's here's you know the conspiracy theorist in me. You know how 
the same conspiracy theorists that, that thought that you know this was that uh, the Fast and Furious was actually a front for gun control. Here, here's another one for you. Now, what's the the uh, possibility that Boehner just wants to have this in his pocket? Uh, and, that is, that's and, possible. But and then come election time, right before you know Obama starts to go out and actually campaign, even though what he's been doing now hasn't been a campaign. Unbelievable. You and I both paid for it. That's unbelievable. Um, but, you know, what's the chances of, you know, him getting ready to gear up his campaign to start slamming Mitt Romney at the same time he's having a fist fight with the House Republicans because of Fast and Furious? I hope I hear Mitt Romney he talking about Fast in, and Furious. Absolutely. He may be putting this in a drawer just until, the, uh, until it comes time for the election. And, you know, during, you know, mid-campaign season, make the, you know, make that a campaign topic and make them have to talk about it. I might be talking if, about if Solyndra, they, everything. Yeah, well, if they, if they had released the documents when, when Issa asked for them, even if this was, you know, it, it, it was as big as we believe it is, even if it was that big, it would have been gone by now. Yeah, that's possible. I mean, the, the fact that they're that, that they're dragging it on and and they're trying to insulate the president. That's what it, that's the whole thing. Sure, they're not releasing the, the documents because they're trying to insulate the president. But what's going to happen is they're going to get hit with contempt of Congress right in the middle of the campaign cycle, and then they're going to be able to tie him to Fast and Furious, and then it's going to be it's all downhill from there. Yeah, and ATS messed up. It's a, it's a good thing uh, that they're concentrating on that because Jay Carney. Uh, he just is is sure that the uh, there wasn't any misconduct by the White House staff when they were down in Columbia. He's he's good to go down there. Yeah, it, it, it amazes me that this guy and, and the one before him, you know, they they were basically both Baghdad Bob. Yeah, you know, yeah. Nothing to see here. They, it's, it's nothing, it's the it's, Americans are nowhere near us. <laughs> That's so funny. I mean, keep up moving. We don't understand what's going on. Just all go all those people that are down there, and everybody's at the party, and those guys are at the church. What? Yeah, you know what I mean. Come on, well, they're they're Democrats. <laughs> yeah, that's true too. But they were down at the welfare office playing cards, or down at Acorn, or yeah. something like that. Uh, yeah. So, ladies and yeah. gentlemen, the uh, they were trying to get Acorn to to, to take root in uh, in Columbia. Yeah, I'm sure. But the White House has determined its advance team was not engaged in any inappropriate conduct as part of the Columbia prostitution scandal after launching an internal review, out of an abundance of caution. Give me. A break, Jay Carney. You need a new job. Sounds like me investigating you. Yeah, I know. You know what I mean? It's ridiculous. I, no, I just didn't do nothing. What are you yeah. talking about? Uh, no, nah, no, nah, there was nothing involved. No, move on. Everything's good. I'm uh, independent. I'm independent. I'm. I'm not part of of Hutch's landing crew. No, no, everything's good. <laughs> nice, but uh, anyway, this the next uh, the next story is kind of something I just have to have to go over a little bit here. It's called the generic ballot bomb. At this point in the presidential election year, Americans are inundated with polls. Often these polls provide no real information at all except the bias in the population samples of the polling organization. As one example, consider this polling data released for April 16th, showing the matchup between Obama and Romney. Depending upon the polling organization, Romney leads Obama by two gallop, by two gallop trails by Obama by nine CNN opinion research, trails Obama by four Reuters Ipsos, or leads Obama by three Rasmussen. Presidential matchup polls are notoriously unpredictable six months before an election. Will underage, will the recent scandal involving Secret Service agents and prostitutes, some perhaps even underage prostitutes, during the president's visit to Columbia suppress his approval for a few weeks? Probably, but that is highly unlikely to swing a presidential election. Moreover, it is almost certain not to have much effect on the other races in 2012, Senate races, House races, six governorships, and thousands of state legislative seats. There is, however, a poll which does show the partisan leaning of America, the generic congressional ballot. When a voter goes to the polls in November, a generic favoring of one party over another will often be the decisive factor in casting a ballot. Indeed, the huge sweep of Republicans up and down the ballot in 2010 can only be explained by this massive and generic rejection of Democrats. So this poll is as close to a straightforward question about which political party a respondent will support in the next election as any question asked in polls. 
What does a generic congressional ballot say about 2012? Rasmussen asked likely voters which party the respondent intends to support in the next congressional election each week and announces the results every Monday. Over the past three years, likely voters in this, likely voters in this poll have favored Republicans over Democrats in almost every single week. At this time last year, the Republican edge was 42 to 40. One week in November, the parties tied at 41%, and one week at the end of January, Democrats held a one-point lead, 41 to 40. Since March, however, the Republican advantage has been growing. The practical end of the Republican fighting for the nomination is a logical explanation for the change. And since the beginning of March, the Republican advantage per week has progressed thus. Plus 3%, plus 6%, plus 4%, plus 5%, plus 6%, plus 5%, plus 10% daily. The trend of other generic congressional ballot polls is the same. Ipsos, which asks all voters rather than likely voters, voters, a polling population which favors Democrats, shows this trend in the last seven polls dating back to October 2011. Minus 8, minus 5, minus 6, minus 4, minus 2, minus 4, minus 1. Quinnipin Pack has asked the question three times since October, and the trend is for Republicans minus 8, minus 4, plus 2. USA Today Gallup asked this question twice in the last six months, with the trend being minus seven, minus two, and tie. So the trend in all the polls since last August has been a steady movement of voters away from the generic Democrat to the generic Republican. Rasmussen, which asks the same question every week and which asks likely voters, ought to be taken seriously. A 10% advantage in the generic ballot, if carried over into other races, would mean a Republican landslide in November. This would mean not just that Romney defeats Obama, but that Republicans win a slew of Senate races that are undecided now. Human events, for example, is showing that Republicans have an excellent chance of defeating Senator Manchin in West Virginia. The new congressional districts will have an inherent volatility, and a Republican wave could mean that Republicans might actually increase their majority in the House. The real story, though, may be in the state elections. As we have learned since 2010, stout-hearted and conservative Republicans in state government, like Walker in Wisconsin and Brewer in Arizona, if supported by Republican state legislatures, can move our agenda forward on many fronts. Going into 2012, Republicans completely control 22 state governments, counting nonpartisan Nebraska's legislature as Republican, while Democrats control only 11 state governments. It's easy to see several states, Alaska, Iowa, Missouri, Montana, New Hampshire, and North Carolina, falling under Republican control. Nevada and Washington could also, in a strong Republican year, be re these Republican states. That made no sense. Additionally, Arkansas and Illinois could shift from Democrat-controlled state to a split-controlled state, a conservative political revolution with beginnings as much in the 50 states as in a Republican-controlled federal government would be an irresistible force. Already, Republicans in states have ended the mandatory deduction of union dues, passed voter ID laws, enacted laws to enforce existing immigration law, tackled the public school mafia, and passed laws to curtail or end abortion on demand. The perfect storm for conservatives would be a federal government supported by a Supreme Court which respects the Constitution and devolves most policy issues back to the states with robust conservatives in state government enacting an agenda which shows the leftist parts of America the benefits of lower taxes and regulations, tort reform, wholesome social values, and true reform of public and college education. Could this happen? If the generic congressional ballot trend continues, it almost certainly will happen. And you can read more at the show notes links uh, on the web page. I just thought that was a, a happy story word that I wanted to bring out there uh, because I think in, in your next segment you're going to show that Americans aren't really happy right now with the way things are going. Yeah, uh, but I want to chime in on that real quick. Um, you know, it, it's one of them things where a lot of people don't think about this. Um, you know, and, and we talked about it when the health care bill was being debated and whatnot. The, and everybody, everybody wants to complain about how high their doctor bill is, how much it costs to go to the doctor and how much, you know, these hospitals charge, et cetera. The problem is it, it's all, it, that was the, you, you hit it right on the head right at the end of your thing with, with tort reform. Until there's tort reform and there's, you know, everybody is looking for a reason to sue a doctor. 
You know, so therefore, in order for a doctor to, to be in business, he has to have malpractice insurance. Well, that malpractice insurance don't come cheap. Especially so, if you're like a brain surgeon or something, like a neurosurgeon. Especially, especially if you're, yeah, if you have a specialty. And the ones that get it the worst are the OBGYNs. Yeah. And, and you get guys, you know, like. Uh, That's why I can't stand John Edwards. Yeah. John Edwards well, made millions of dollars off that. Oh. Exactly. And, Evil and, man. And it had absolutely no impact, you know. He he might want to say that he was doing that for his client, but these attorneys get 33% of the findings. So they're going to sue yeah. for millions of dollars, and the person gets a couple million, and, and, the, and the lawyer puts quite a few million in his pocket. The, until that, you know, until there could be tort reform and there could be a, a de decision made on frivolous lawsuits, you know, and people this die. And this shows I you mean, right where the Obama administration is. They refused... To even oh, yeah. talk about that issue when they were overhauling the health care system. And you're absolutely right, Ward. It's a twofold thing. It's tort reform, but it's also getting insurance back to what insurance is. And not having health care plans. We need to have health insurance. To well, where and the thing is, health insurance is, was put in place for catastrophic And that's the way it was when we were growing up. You went to the doctors and you gave them 50 bucks and you broke your arm. Yeah. Or, or whatever it was. But now, you know, it's like, well, I got the sniffles, so I'm going to go to the emergency room. And, and Medicare is going to pay for it. Or even if, you go in, even if you go in and get a scheduled test or something like that, you're not going in there and paying for it. You're showing them the insurance card. And, and now the test costs $20,000 because the insurance only pays however many percent. It's ridiculous. Well, no, here's the problem with that. Because what happens is with Medicare and Medicaid, the, the hospital, say for something like an MRI, okay, an MRI is like $2,000. I only say that because I had one. And the government it's, pays 1500 of that or something. No. The government will come in and go, we'll give you two fifty. Well, that's what I'm saying. I mean, no, they, they pay less than 10% really? what the cost is. Yeah. And that's and why so, the rest of the costs go up. And that's why the rest of the costs go up because they, they have to pass that, that loss that they took onto the people that, that aren't using Medicare, right. Medicaid, or where the government, and, and here's the thing, the government comes and goes, we're going to give you 200, 200 bucks for it, that's it, case closed. Don't, yeah. don't resubmit. Right, and they want to go even lower than that. But it's, a yeah. good, but it's a good thing because, as you found, we really love our government. Yeah. Uh, a decade ago, Americans felt similarly about their local, state, and federal governments no longer. <laughs> Today, uh, one in three is well excuse me today one, just one in three has a favorable view of the federal government the lowest level in 15 years according to a pew survey the majority of americans remain satisfied with their local and state governments, 61 percent and 52 percent respectively but only 33 percent feel like was about the federal government in 2002 nearly double that figure 50 64 percent viewed the federal government favorably and Americans held their local and state governments in similar esteem at 67 and 62 percent, respectively. Uh, there is an expected partisan gap. A majority of Democrats, 51 percent, view the Obama-led government favorably compared to the 27 percent of independents and the 20 percent of Republicans during the Bush presidency. A majority of Republicans viewed the federal government favorably while uh, support for it faded among Democrats. So basically, it, it, it's one of the things, it, it's very partisan. You know, it's, it, it, when we talked about this before, especially with this election coming up, you have the hardcore Democrats that have been Democrats their whole life. Their father's been a Democrat. That's all they know is to be a Democrat. So they're going to go and they're, they're going to vote for the Democrat no matter who it is. Then you got the Republicans. The Republicans are the same way. The hardcore Republicans are going to vote for whoever the Republican candidate is. Doesn't matter. The chunk in the middle is the independence which is like 20 percent or something like that because there's a you also have to add a huge percentage of americans that don't vote and don't pay attention and don't have a fucking clue excuse my yeah. language but it that angers me that bothers but me it's the guys in the middle that that you have to sway and based on this poll and the poll that hutch was just talking about that 20 percent in the middle is going to start leaning right they're already they already fell all the way off into right i think at this point, I mean, I don't see how 51% of Democrats approve of the Obama administration. Are they? I but just the, it blows me away. Man. I think my brother's even starting to slide. He, I heard him last night. I, I don't know. He's not liking Obama. 
that he's a card carrier and he's been to the Democrat National Convention. Uh, so I don't know. That's that's not good for the for the guys. Good for me. <laughs> yeah, I hope so. Senator James Inhofe, Inhofe, Republican Oklahoma, took to the Senate floor today to draw attention to a video of a top EPA official saying the EPA's philosophy is to crucify and make examples of oil and gas companies, just as the Romans crucified random citizens in areas they conquered to ensure obedience. This is uh, beyond the pale, and I heard the video, but the sound quality wasn't good enough. I wasn't going to put it on the show. Uh, and Hoffa quoted a little watch video from 2010 of EPA official Region 6 Administrator Al Armanderas admitting that EPA's general philosophy is to crucify and make examples of oil and gas companies. In the video, Administrator Armanderas says, I was in a meeting once and I gave an analogy to my staff about my philosophy of enforcement. And I think it was probably a little crude and maybe not appropriate for the meeting, but I'll go ahead and tell you what I said anyway. It was kind of like how the Romans used to, you know, conquer villages in the Mediterranean. They'd go into a little Turkish town somewhere, they'd find the first five guys they saw, and they'd crucify them. Then, you know, that town was really easy to manage for the next few years. It's a deterrent factor, Amandaris said, explaining that the EPA is following the Romans' philosophy for subjugating conquered villages. Soon after Armandez, Armandaris tooted the EPA's philosophy, the EPA began smear campaigns against natural gas producers, in Hafe's office noted in advance of today's Senate speech. Not long after Administrator Armandaris made these comments in 2010, EPA targeted U.S. natural gas producers in Pennsylvania, Texas, and Wyoming. That's range resources for you people in the local area. In all three of these cases, EPA initially made headline-grabbing statements, either insinuating or proclaiming outright that the use of hydraulic fracturing by American energy producers was the cause of water contamination. But in each case, their comments were premature at best, and despite their most valiant efforts, they have been unable to find any sound scientific evidence to make this link. In his Senate speech, Senator Inhofe said the video provides Americans with a glimpse of the Obama administration's true agenda. That agenda, Inhofe said, is to incite fear in the public with unsubstantiated claims and intimidate oil and gas companies with threats of unjustified fines and penalties, then quietly backtrack once the public's perception has been firmly jaded against oil and natural gas. Well, that's just a, a barbaric word. I mean, to, for a, a, the guy ought to be fired already. And they ought to start. They ought to start paring down the EPA. That ought to, That would be a good area for Mitt Romney to target right there. Well, that goes back to you know, uh, if you remember when they asked uh, Rick Perry what three departments he would get rid of. <laughs> well, and, what a sad moment that, for that guy. The the my first one would have been yeah, the EPA. Absolutely. The EPA does absolutely nothing in this country except inhibit job growth and destroy. Put, it dest help destroy our town. Yeah, and it and it puts it puts uh, manufacturing businesses out of business in this country. It puts, you know, uh, I mean, in the city of Pittsburgh, it put an entire city out of business. So I have absolutely no love lost for the EPA, and I feel the same about them as I do about the Department of Education, which I think also should be uh, scrapped because it's nothing more. And, and Jimmy Carter put it in place. In, uh, in the 70s, and it should have been scrapped then because it does absolutely nothing for education except mandate what uh, curriculum that the uh, students are going to follow, and it extorts money. It's nothing but it's nothing but a skim uh, a skim scheme. So I take my tax dollars, I send it to the Department of, of Education. The Department of Education takes their cut, and then sends the remainder back to my state. Why isn't it going directly to the state? Yeah, I mean, it's not. The federal money shouldn't I mean, even go to education unless there's some kind of serious problem with something. But, uh, I mean, a good example is the next story, Ward. I mean, the TSA is just running amok. Yeah, TSA screeners allegedly let drug filled luggage through LAX for cash. Four current and former trans, uh, Transportation Security Administration screeners have been arrested and face charges of taking bribes and looking for the other way. Uh, are looking for the other way while, or looking the other way, excuse me. 
Re reading is fundamental. Uh, looking the other way, while suitcases filled with cocaine, methamphetamine, or marijuana pass through x-ray machines at Los Angeles International Airport, F uh, federal authorities announced on Wednesday the TSA screeners who were arrested Tuesday night and Wednesday morning allegedly see received up to $2,400 in cash bribes in exchange for allowing large drug shipments to pass through checkpoints in what the uh, U.S. Attorney General in Los Angeles called a significant breakdown of security. In addition to the two current and two former uh, screeners, prosecutors also indicted two alleged drug carriers uh, and a third who allegedly tried to smuggle 11 pounds of cocaine but was nabbed when he went through the wrong security checkpoint. Stupid the, TS <laughs> the TSA employees placed greed above the, na the nation's security needs. Andre Brittle, Jr., U.S. Attorney for the uh, Central District of California, said in a statement, The 40-page indictment outlines five alleged smuggling incidents over a six-month period last year. In one incident, uh, screeners schemed to allow about eight pounds of methamphetamine to pass through security and then went to the airport restroom where it was handed where he was handed six hundred dollars <coughs> excuse me uh, six hundred dollars the second half of the payment for the delivery according to prosecutors the transportation security administration is once again the subject of national scrutiny this time after aggressively screening a seven-year-old female passenger with cerebral palsy, which caused her family to miss their flight. The girl, identified as Dina Frank, in a report by The Daily, was waiting with her family on Monday to board a flight departing from JFK in New York headed to Florida. Since Dina walks with the aid of leg braces and crutches, she cannot pass through airport metal detectors and must instead submit to a pat-down by TSA agents. Dina, who is also reportedly developmentally disabled, is usually frightened by the procedure. Her family reportedly requests that agents on hand take the time to introduce themselves to her. However, the agents on duty at the time began to handle her aggressively instead. Air travel was difficult to the family due to Dina's disabilities, but the nature of Monday's inspection was especially traumatic for the child. Uh, that's unforgivable. I mean, the whole way that the, the stories that have been coming out about the TSA lately, uh, it, it's almost time to replace them, too. Well, no, I, I agree. It's definitely time to replace them. I think that what you should do... The terrorists are right? winning. Here's what you do. Uh, yeah, exactly. The terrorists are winning because their job is to instill terror. I mean, they're... they're to make you afraid to do things. So what we should do is, is send a, a, a group of... Uh, uh, individuals will, you know, uh, an advanced landing party with, you know, explicit rules not to go to any hookers. <laughs> Send them over to Israel. See how the Israelis handle airport security. Nobody on this planet does it any better than the Israelis. The Israelis don't have bombs going off in their airport. They don't have airlines being hijacked. You know the they don't have any of that issue because they know how to do it and they know how to do it right. You know what the donors do is LL. follow it after that. That's right, but we could never do that here because what they do at LL, what the Israelis do for their stellar record, is they don't look for weapons. They look for terrorists. They look for exactly. terrorists. They profile. A hundred percent profile. And it works every time, and that's what the hell we ought to be doing. That's why I said we send people over there to train with the Israelis and come back and implement that here. From now on, if you're from Patterson, New Jersey, or Dearborn, Michigan, or out in Minneapolis, you don't get to fly anymore. Take a bus. You know what I mean? Well, you get to fly, but you're going to get patted down. You know, if you if you come in, you know, with your passport or your plane ticket, your plane ticket says that my name is Muhammad <laughs> whatever, Muhammad, you're getting patted down. Certainly. Blame your people for it, you know? Uh, the last story of the of the week: Muslim American soldier assaults U.S. marshal and deputy sheriff with bloody spit. Private Nasser Jason Abdo, an AWOL soldier, that's absent without leave, soldier from Fort Campbell, Kentucky, who refused to deploy to Afghanistan, arrested and charged in another Fort Hood bomb plot. In what can only be described as distinguishing but disgusting behavior. Muslim soldier PFC Nasser Jason Abdo bit through his lower lip yesterday and then spat on a U.S. Marshal and Deputy Sheriff who were escorting him back to jail in Waco, Texas. I wonder if he fell down the stairs when he was 
on the uh, way to jail there. I'll bet he did. Yeah. Had he been arrested in Pittsburgh? <laughs> He'd have fell down the elevator shaft. <laughs> uh, examiner Abdo is a Muslim soldier accused last year of plotting to detonate a bomb in a restaurant near Fort Hood, the same Fort Hood where another Muslim soldier massacred 13 soldiers and wounded 45 in an act of workplace violence, uh, frequented by U.S. soldiers, a crime for which he previously confessed. Uh, apparently angered by Judge Walter Smith's decision not to reject the previous confession, Abdo, 22, spat on the two officers in the elevator of the Waco Federal Building after a pretrial hearing in U.S. District Court. Uh, Abdo went AWOL from Fort Campbell on July 4th, 2011. Why do these people even join the Army? And was arrested in a motel room in Colleen, that's outside Fort Hood, July 27th on suspicion of making a weapon of mass destruction with intent to harm others. Abdo was also previously arrested on charges of possessing child pornography. These people were always pedophiles, too. You notice that? Yeah. This is like a trend going on. Uh, this is particularly uh, disturbing because I read an article right before the show, Ward, that uh, West Point, the United States Mil Military Academy, the Army's uh, Military Academy, made the cadets go down to Jersey City for... Uh, I don't know what you call it, like diversity training. They made them go into the Muslim mosques and, and all this. They made the female cadets, I saw pictures, they made female cadets wear them freaking burqas. The U.S. They, Military Academy did. They can thank whatever this has to change. all of fucking God that they prayed to that, it was, that they didn't do that while I was in because I would have fucking... I'll get thrown out over it. I'll get thrown out over the shit. I'm not, you know, yeah. this no. is like, this is going too far. There's some... You know, there's a lot of people from CARE and the Muslim Brotherhood that are in the, uh, not the TSA, but in the Department of Homeland Security. Oh, yeah. You absolutely. wouldn't believe. I read an article. I can't believe I didn't have it for the show. Uh, but I read an article last week that named names, buddy. I mean, they were in every department, and their, their affiliation to the Muslim Brotherhood uh, is there. I mean, it's on paper. And they're in the government, man. It, somebody's got to get in there and clean this out. I, I hope... I hope Romney has some advisors, or, or either he himself is well versed on this, because I think this is a probably one of the biggest crises our country's faced, uh, coupled with the financial problems uh, ever. I mean, this is this is something that we just started digging into it. I mean, this is uh, some of this stuff that we find is unbelievable to me. Yeah, I totally agree. It, it, it it's just. You know, it's one of them cases where people are afraid to, you know, everything has to be politically correct. And I, I just thank God that I don't have that, that reflex in me to be politically correct because... Political it, correctness is a tactic. Yeah, absolutely. It was designed by our enemies. It actually wasn't designed for us by our enemies, but it was designed by communists and Marxists to control their own populations. Uh, yeah. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, that's about it. Uh, you can send us an email, steelcityresistance at gmail.com. Uh, you can call the show, 412-254-3750. Leave your comments under two minutes or they'll get chopped off. Uh, you can call more than once. There's only ever been two calls to that line, I think. So you can be famous. <laughs> you know? But you can, uh, where can they find us on Facebook? Our Facebook page is pretty robust these days. Yeah, it's uh, facebook.com slash still city resistance. Uh, you can also, did Hutch, did you do send us an email? Yeah, I, I did. And okay. I, and I forgot the last couple of weeks right. about Freedom Connector. Go to Freedom Connector. It's on our website. You can join our group, Steel City Resistance. There's currently 61 people in the group. Uh, get on there, and you, you'll. I always post the show there. And uh, there's all kinds of other groups that are affiliated with Steel City Resistance, like 30 some of them. Uh, so get over there and check out what they're doing. Uh, our blog roll on the side of our, our show link, or I mean our links on the side of the website. The website's pretty interesting. There's a, there's a video up there right now that I found. I, I like to know my enemy, so I go around and every now and then I start researching what the Imam Bebobs are talking about. And, uh, you know, they compile some, some footage, uh, anti-American military footage that I like to check out just to see what the enemy's thinking about. And, uh... There's a, a pretty long video up there right now that's like that. Now, if you don't like to see explosions, you probably don't want to turn it on or 
if you don't want to hear Obama talking, you know, you probably, I'll, I'll, it's up to you. Uh, but it's up there, and I post stuff like that, so, uh, whoop, there it is. Uh, you got anything else for the cause, Ward? No, sir, I'm over and out. Okay, uh, ladies and gentlemen, thanks for letting us spend an hour with you, and we will see you next week.